Okay, so today we'll be going through uh, chapter 18 of the books, which talks about uh, explaining models, explaining models and predictions. So um, for the learning objective in which we'll be covering today, uh, we are going to recognize uh, some R packages uh, for model explanations. So we are going to, uh, guys will be using the Daleks and what are the Daleks extra to produce local model explanation for a model train uh, using a tidy model. We are also going to use uh, the Daleks and Daleks extra to produce global model explanation for model train uh, using uh, using the tidy model. So we are also going to produce uh, partial dependencies uh, profile for a model train uh, using a uh, tidy model. Uh, so those are that is the learning objective of what we'll be covering through uh, in this uh, chapter 18. Uh, so for the first part of the book, uh, because I'll be using the notes uh, from the previous uh, cohorts, so they just uh, loaded uh, all the light, the packages in which I will be using the tidy model, the scheme R, which is like to show us some kind of uh, descriptive uh, summary statistics uh, from the data sets. And also these are all the tools in which uh, they are going to be using uh, to explain the model in which uh, in which we are going to build. So yeah, definitely what this tool line is doing is uh, definitely reading in uh, the, the model, the Roche model, and this is the DF, which is like uh, the data set. So it's like they have already, uh, they have already trained the model in which they save the model in an object. They're just reading that model and also a data set in which we'll be using uh, for predictions. So when we look at the scheme for the Roche DF, which is going to give us uh, this summary, so it shows that the name is Roche DF. It has 95,186 rows. It has a uh, 40 column. Uh, it also give us, we have nine, uh, 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 we have nine column that are, that are character. We have 15 columns that are of fact type factor. We also have a uh, 16 column that are of type uh, numeric, which is also double. So group variables is known because we did not group by any uh, variable. So this is just uh, giving us uh, some information, some idea about the data set. So the number of missing, number of complete rates, minimum value for each maximum number of empty, number of unique, uh, and also the white uh, spaces, which is uh, zero. So this is just giving us uh, an idea of uh, the data sets uh, in which we'll be using uh, for the modeling. So, and uh, normally uh, for the Daleks Extra, the Daleks Extra is a very uh, it's a very good uh, package in which you just have this uh, function, which is like explain tidy models. We have, we can also use it in when we train model using scikit learn in, Py in Python. We can also use uh, the Dalek Extra package uh, to explain that model. There, it has explain underscore function for almost bunch of model in which we train. So here we have explained uh, tidy models. We pass in uh, the model, which is the Roche model. We pass in the data, which is the Roche DF. Then this is the response value. So we say verbose to be true. So once uh, we execute uh, that line, uh, we are going to have, uh, we are going to have this. Let me switch. Let me switch uh, to half different. Let me switch to this. Let me switch to this. So let's switch to this. So, so I'm, I'm also going to try this out using another tool, which is the Model Studio. I don't know if you can see my ID. Yeah, we can see it. Yep. So let's switch. So in this case, I'm using the AMES data set. I just load it in. So here yeah, we use log transform. Okay. So we we do the splitting to have both uh, the training and testing sets. So this is just a data set 
in which that we have already gone through in our previous chapter, which is chapter 10. So I just grabbed this code from there. This is uh, like the pre-processing step. These are the various recipes. Uh, this is the workflow. We train a workflow, we pass in the model, so we fit the model, okay? So this is random forest model. We fit the model here, okay? So like uh, like the, what they did uh, explain in the book. So uh, we have a VIP future, which stands for like the variable important futures in the model. So this is going to help us to extract uh, which, which among all the traits in which we are using to fit our model, which one is contributing more, uh, which one is contributing more uh, to the uh, variation in which we are having in the overall data set because in the objective we have two types. Uh, we have the local model, which is going to give us an idea about just a single data point. Okay, we also have the global uh, model, variable importance of, for the global model, which is giving us an idea about uh, what is going on in the overall uh, data set. So once we train this data VIP train, okay, so we have the explain tidy model function. Okay, explain tidy model, we pass in uh, the model, we pass in the data, we pass in the response. Uh, we say label is linear model plus interaction, then verbose is false. So when we look at explain, explain underscore explainer underscore LM. So when we look at that, oh, sorry, uh, typo. So when we look at this, Okay, so when we look at this, we can see that uh, we have the data head, which is we can see not a mess, uh, gross living area. We can see the year belt. We can see the building type. We can see the latitude. We can also see the uh, the longitude. So, but when we use this other tool, in which I use the model studio. When I use this other tool to, ex to extract futures in which we get from the model, why that is, why that is uh, running? So let me quickly share the book. There is something. Why that is going, I should quickly switch to the book. Let's quickly switch to the book. So this is what we are trying to look at. Quickly, this is still the code I'm trying to explain. Okay, so this is still the code. So for the local explanation, so which is just giving us information about a single data set. So we can just VIP train, we select row 120, all the column. So this is what we are going to get. It's just giving us the neighborhoods, the gross living area, the latitude and longitude, just as I explained. So, but when we use predict underscore path function from the Dalex package, so we just need to pass in the explainer. Then we need to pass in the new observation, which is uh, the duplex. So when we look at the LM, LM uh, breakdown, when we look at the LM breakdown, is going to give us linear models plus interaction. Also going to give us the information about that single row in which we predict. Because remember, here yeah, we subset VIP train, we subset for row 120, which is just a single row of observation. This is what uh, we want to pass into predict on the score path. We want to know what is driving what, uh, what is driving this prediction, what is causing this prediction in which we are getting. So it's going to give us information about just that single row of data points in which, uh, which is new observation, which is the duplex. We can see that LM plus interaction, the prediction uh, was just 5.00, 5.002. I don't know if there are any questions. No questions no. at the moment, thank you. 
Okay, so it's just going to give us that. So, but if we try the same thing for the random forest uh, model, so once we do explainer, we pass in the explainer, we pass in the new observation, which is uh, the duplex. So for the explainer, we pass in the explainer for the random forest new observation. So random forest uh, breakdown. So when we see this, uh, we are going to have the random forest uh, prediction, which is around uh, 4.969. So that is, that is the predictions in which we got from this model. But the one, one uh, drawback for this is that it changed uh, the ordering in which uh, these outputs appear. So in order for them to fix that, they need to order it by the linear model. So they pass in the LM underscore breakdown dollars and variable name because they want to order it to make sure that the outputs we are getting from both the linear model and the random forest model, we want to have uh, the same order. So here we can see in this order, we are having the intercepts, we have the gross living area, we have the random forest building type, then we are at the end, at the end here, uh, we are getting, uh, we are getting uh, the predictions uh, in which uh, in which the model is uh, giving us, is giving us the overall idea that in this model, this is uh, the value for that single observation in which uh, we subset for. So this is the prediction we are getting. So, okay, it's like the, the, the other model in which I was running in VS Code is up, so I can just share it. So, so what this model studio is doing is still, is still going to help us to explain uh, to explain the output in which we get. So when we just say model studio, we pass in the explainer. So we can see that interaction studio for LM plus interaction uh, model. So we can see the interaction. This is the future importance. We can see that the most important future uh, in which we are getting uh, from this model, the most important, the most, sorry, Oh, let me stop this. I will have to run it again. Yep. Stop. Sorry. Let me go back to VS Code. Yep. Start it all over again. So let's see this. Okay, so so what we are, why that is running, why, so that I will not waste time there. So what we have here is that, okay, so we have the linear model. So we pass in the explainer, which is explainer underscore LM. New observation is duplex. So when we look at the LM, this is the LM, this is the breakdown uh, in which we got from the linear model. So for this is uh, the breakdown, so the outputs we got uh, in the random forest model, it does not follow the same ordering just as what we got uh, from the linear model. But in order for us to order it in such a way that the outputs we are getting from the prediction from the linear model and the random forest model, uh, they both follow the same order. So that is why we use the order LM breakdown dollar sign uh, variable name. So when we order it in this way, we can see that uh, both the output from both uh, the linear, uh, the linear, and the random forest uh, model uh, is following the same uh, is following the same order. So, but when we look at here, set seed sharp uh, duplex uh, predicts underscore parts explainer explainer for the random forest. Uh, the new observation should be duplex. Then the type should be sharp which is for the sharply uh, additive uh, index, which we'll see in the model studio uh, package, the function in which I run in the model studio. So for it, let, which has, I think is there. So let me quickly show that what I was trying to explain. Uh, yeah, so this is just the output we'll get from that model studio for the LM plus interaction in which I will still do the same thing for the random forest model. This is the future importance. So this future importance is showing, telling us about 
uh, which future, which is the most important future that is driving uh, this change uh, in which we are seeing the model. We can see in the in the y-axis here, we are having the root mean square error for the overall model. We can see that the most important future in this model is the gross living area. And if it's checked there, because model loss after gross living is permitted to be 0.136, dropout loss is plus 0.006. So the most second most important futures we are seeing in this model is the neighborhood, while the least uh, important future is the building uh, is the building type. So we can also look at the Sharpley's uh, value for the local. Okay, we also have the breakdown for the local. We can also have Sitelis parables for the local model, partial dependencies plots for the global, which is overall. So let's see, look at the breakdown for the local model. So once I click this, it's just going to give us other outputs. Uh, this model studio is, all, is a very good uh, package in which we can use uh, in explaining various models in which we train from the tidy model. So we can look at the Citeris Paribus plot. These are all for the local model, which is going to show us uh, it's just a shiny app in which they have already written all the codes. We can also look at another futures. Uh, let's look at uh, future distribution. Let's look at received uh, accumulated dependencies, which is about the global, which is talking about the overall data set. So, but for that, let's still look at the local, let's still look at target futures EDA. Okay, so this is just uh, going to give us overall idea uh, about uh, what is happening in our model. I don't know if there are any question before we explore before we proceed. Hello, Madam Freya, I don't know if there are any questions yeah, so far. Yeah, we, we're here. I'm just like very impressed about the thing that you showed this like uh, kind of dashboard. You said that's an add-on in our studio? No, you said you need to install the package in our studio. Let's see that, let me see but the package is. That's the Dallas package? No, it's Model Studio. It's a Model Studio. Oh, Let me okay. see my house studio. Where did I have it? Yeah, I was also looking into this. I'm also impressed with this. Not seen it before. Yeah, very much. Uh, Model Studio, I think, is supposed to be on Crown. Let's confirm. Looks like it is on CRAN. It's on CRAN, yeah. So you yeah, can install it. So once we have created that explainer, model explainer, we just pass in the explainer. That is, but in this, uh, the one we I showed was the explainer uh, for the linear model, but we can also pass in that for the random forest model. So let's see, model. Yep, it's on CRAN. Model Studio is on CRAN. Yeah. So, so let me see, share my screen. I want to share. My VS code, let's see, let's explore that for the random forest model, okay? So this is the model for the random forest, okay? So the explainer, we just have to recall the function from my namespace model studio explainer underscore RF. So once I run that, so it's going to take a few time for the model to come up. So, but while we wait there, we can go back uh, to the notes. I can proceed in the notes. Yep. So, so just just to clarify, the thing that opened up is yes. like uh, this is kind of like a flex dashboard kind of thing. It's like it runs on HTML and the thing and like using the code that you provided with this like helper yes. or like explainer model studio function. Yes. 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 Got it. Okay, thank you. It's very impressive. 
Yes, thank you. Okay, so we could use default. Okay, so, so this plot is also doing, uh, this is also showing us uh, the same output, the same explainer. In this other case, we are seeing that the most important feature from this model uh, is the year built followed by the gross living area. But why the least important feature is just uh, the neighborhood, which is just the not AMES in our data set. So uh, uh, what all these tools is doing us is that we must have, we can, maybe we have built our model. Our model might can be a, just a very uh, complex model in which we have built, which is very difficult uh, for us to understand. So we can use these Dalex, Dalex Extra and Model Studio. We can use it to dissect this model, help us to derive more insights uh, from the model in which uh, in which we just built. So here we are we are extracting uh, uh, this future out from the model, which is row one, two, six, nine, which are all the big house houses. So this is the information. Okay. So we just uh, want to use our predict underscore path function. So this predict underscore path function, we pass in the explainer, we pass in the new observation type is sharp, then B is uh, equals uh, to 20. So when we look at this, uh, the result sh the result shows uh, shows this type of output. So it shows that uh, the gross living area is also drive is a very important feature in the model uh, because uh, it, uh, it's contributing more, more because in the y-axis we are having the contribution. So follows by the year belt, why the, the one that contribute the least uh, future is just uh, the building type. So it's just going to help us uh, to understand uh, the model in which uh, in which we we are fitted using our tidy model. So so but uh, just one quick one is that uh, one quick one is that the local uh, my sharing. Which screen am I sharing, please? Oh, we see the book. The book? Uh, we see chapter 17 of the book. Okay. Let's see. Close. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? Okay. Ah. Uh, Okay, so we are true here. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just want to explain one thing is that the local model explanation is giving us information about a single prediction about a single data point, just as what they explain in the book. But if you want to get an overall estimate about the entire data set, so we don't need to do the local uh, uh, model uh, prediction uh, variable importance again. We need to switch uh, to the global. The global, which is about this, is giving us overall idea about what is going on in the entire model uh, in which uh, we are fitted in the tidy model. So, so but this global is still the same syntax. So we set the seed. We are still using model underscore path function. We pass in the explainer for the linear model loss function, which is loss root mean uh, square, okay? We also do that, the same thing for the random forest uh, model, okay? But in this case, we are using a new function, which is plots, VIP LM, VIP random forest. So this, uh, we are, this plot function, we simply define a function here from ggplot2. And this function is taking, it can take, several argument, that is why they were using dot, dot, dot. Uh, so they have an object, which is a list of which taking a several list can object, the metrics, the metric for the label, okay? So this is a function in which uh, they just are uh, defined. So they now use the ggplot uh, importance, IMP function. So they pass in the VIP LM and VIP variable importance for the for the random forest model. So this is going to give us 
uh, this uh, visualization. So what this visualization is doing is that this is for the linear model plus interaction. This is for the random forest. So it's giving us this dotted line. This dotted line is the root mean square error. I think that is going to be the average root mean square error for the entire model in which uh, we have trained, okay? So they, and they also explain that futures that are further to the right of this dotted line, they are the most important futures that is driving a change in the overall model uh, in which we are fitted. And, and here we can also see that for the linear model plus interaction, that the most important future is the gross living area. And the same thing goes again for the random forest uh, model, because we can see uh, the root mean square error, which is around 0 0.15 for the LM plus interaction for the random forest, which is also close to 0 0.15. For for the oh sorry what am I doing again? I think oh. the arrows like in the sides of the of the book are if you click them by me. Yes 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 see. yes 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 yes. So let me check again. Let me check again. So maybe my system is just <laughs> it's just misbehaving today. So uh, okay, while you're so scrolling. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I thought it's very interesting that the difference between the two explainer plots that I think everything is pretty much similar except yes. for the difference between year built and neighborhood. Where yes, and um, also I think the building type. Look at the building type. Look at the root mean square row for the building type. Um. Yeah, it's very low for random forest, but I think it's the lowest for both uh for both models uh, yes like, yes yes yeah. okay so let's see is there any questions apart from that uh no yeah just an interesting note yeah, thank okay you. thank you for that uh so this also shows us the lm plus interaction random forest this is for the overall average this is the root mean square error and they say future further to the right. They are the most important future that is driving uh, the models. So we can uh, we can we cannot drop such futures uh, from their our model because they they are very very important. Just like the gross living area, the year belt, and also uh, the neighborhood. So, but uh, going further, we can also in this section they talk about uh, building global explanations from local explanation because local explanation is talking about, is giving us explanation about just uh, the single data points. So what, why is the model, what is causing the model to make a such prediction for a single data point? Why, but in this case, we want to see how we can draw the global explanation from, uh, from that local explanation. So what did they did there? They said a random sheet, so here yeah, they were using the partial dependency plot for the, for the age variable. So they are using this function, which is uh, the model underscore profile. So here yeah, they pass in the explainer, they pass in the number of sample, the say variables, which will be here built. Here yeah, they define the functions. So they define the functions here. So here yeah, they define the functions. So which is uh, takes two arguments. It takes the objects and also it takes another object, which is the X. So those are the two inputs in which uh, the function is taken. So when we now visualize this, passing in the two objects, X, which is PDP underscore H, which is a partial dependency plot, uh, the X, which is gonna be the year belt, okay? So year belt, so here we can see that the houses, the sale price for houses that is built uh, in different years, that they are, that they are mostly, they mostly they are flats. But when they get to around uh, the 1960 or thereabouts, the, that we can see that the sale price uh, begin uh, to increase. So this is also one approach in which uh, they discuss in the book in which we can use uh, in explaining our model, but they also explain that there are several other approach in which we can also use uh, to draw derived insights from our model 
just like the tool in which I showed in the model studio, which has almost all, almost all the functions in which we can use uh, in explaining our model. So also here, yeah, what did they did here? They did the same thing for the, for the random forest model. Okay, so they did the same uh, visualization. So we have gross living area. Uh, we have the gross uh, living area uh, in the in the x-axis. We also have the sale price. Uh, we can see that we also have almost uh, the same trend. This data set also uh, follow through uh, the same trend. I think Federica just uh, join us. Hello. Yeah, hello. I think we are we are we are trying to explain uh, the global explanation uh, from the models. We are going through the book. So so what uh, do we have? What did they show here? So they did the same thing. Is the same uh, is the same function just as I explained above. But here they tried to see how they are going to facet. They are going to facet it by the building types. We can see the duplex. We can see that the trend in which the data is falling for one farm down the two family and also down SE. So I don't know so far, I don't know if there are any questions before we go back to the bins. No questions, thank you. There's a lot going on here, but you're explaining it well. Okay. So let's go back to the beans because uh, this is just mainly is talking about uh, back to beans. It is about the, what uh, we, we have already discussed when we are looking at chapter 16, which talk about when we are discussing uh, dimensionality reductions uh, techniques. So here they set a random seed. They are still using this explain tidy models uh, function that is coming from the Dalax extra package. So they pass in they pass in the model, they pass in the data set, they pass in uh, the response, okay, which is the Y, which is in this case, we're having class, which is because it's a classification. So we have the label, which is RDA, and they both false, and then they are using the model underscore parts function. So uh, this is going to give us uh, this uh, uh, visualization. I think that, that, that the dotted line there is going to give us uh, idea about uh, the uh, uh, the root mean square. So we can see that shape factor four, shape factor four uh, is the most uh, important feature in this model. Why the least important feature in this model is the extent, okay? So the most important is shape factor four, which is the very, the most important uh, feature uh, uh, from the model in which uh, which is driving uh, the change uh, in the model. Uh, the shape factor four, uh, we can use, uh, they gave us uh, the formula, which is A all over what pi, multiplied by L over two, and as uh, uh, axis, where L is a minor, minor axis. So for the, uh, for the chapter, so basically we have seen how we can use the Daleks uh, the Daleks Extra and also the model studio in which I try to show in which we use uh, in drawing insights from their models. So, but they also have other future like the VIP and also the line with this is another additional tools in which we can use in deriving insights uh, from, uh, from our model in which uh, we have created uh, using, using tidy models. So I think, uh, I think uh, that is that. I don't know if uh, Federica has one or two things uh, to add. Um, no, that's okay. So I think, can I stop 